Seattle, Washington, the Emerald City, home of the best ballpark in baseball. After a 91 win season in 2000, the Mariners sweep the Chicago White Sox! And taking the New York Yankees to six games in the ALCS, expectations were certainly high for the 2001 Mariners squad. But with a few new arrivals and one key departure, how well would the Mariners fare in the deeply talented American League West? Most of the experts picked the Mariners to finish second in their division. Skipper Lou Pinella explained what made this year's team different than other teams he has managed. We have a very different style team here in Seattle than we've had in other years. We don't have the thunder and the power. Swinging a high fly to right, misses it deep. Home run for Alex Rodriguez. The defending AO West champion Oakland Athletic were picked by many to repeat as the division winner. The Texas Rangers and their revamped offense looked very capable of putting up runs. And on paper, they appeared to be serious contenders for the division crown. But it seemed that nobody in the division could match the Mariners pitching staff, especially with an already outstanding bullpen adding ex-Yankee reliever Jeff Nelson. Seattle also welcomed back the sheriff, Norm Charlton. People are counting on Texas to put up big runs, but they're debating whether or not their pitching is going to show up. But Seattle, they can put up some runs, and they have a great pitching staff. Solid pitching in place, the Mariners spent the rest of their offseason searching for more power and speed. Thanks to the leadership of GM Pat Gillick, the Mariners got all that and more with two key offseason acquisitions, second baseman Brett Boone and right fielder Ichiro Suzuki. The Mariners and Ichiro have agreed upon a three-year major league contract. Wherever there's talent we think that can make our ball club better, we're going to take a look at some of those spots and, and hopefully come up with some players. And some more sensational defense by second baseman Brett Boone. A former gold glove winner at second base, Boone spent the 2000 season with the San Diego Padres. One ball and one strike. A little ground ball. Into center for a base hit. We all know the type of swing that Brett Boone takes. He got under it, but it went a long way. Boone's ability to hit for power and his excellent glove made him very attractive to the Mariners. For Boone, signing with Seattle was a very easy choice. There was something about him. I've been on two teams that have gone to the postseason one World Series, and those teams had it. And you can't describe what it is. It's just kind of a feeling that you're good enough and you're going to be able to do it. When it presented itself this winter, it was intriguing to me because it's uh, – it's what it's all about, getting into the postseason, and I think we definitely have a chance. With Boone starting at second, Pinello then could fully exploit Mark McLemore's amazing versatility by playing him at other outfield and infield positions. It's a luxury for a baseball team. You can come to the ballpark and see him from second to third to short to every outfield position. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a fly ball hit into deep center field. Cameron going back to the track, to the wall. The past few seasons, the Mariners have done quite well in adding speed to their lineup. Throw from Posada is high, and he's in there. In signing Ichiro, the Mariners added not only speed, but an international superstar. His seven batting titles in Japan were equally impressive. He's a good all-around ball player. He's got a good throwing arm, he's got good hands, he can run, he can put the ball in play. But he's a pleasant young guy, too. Just how did they manage to sign the highly touted Japanese baseball legend? We had a little head start or a little advantage over the rest of the clubs because we had had him in our camp two years ago in that exchange program with the Blue Wave. In spring training, it wouldn't take long before Ichiro Mania was in full swing. Some wanted to see him play baseball. Others wanted to discover what made him earn such enormous celebrity status in Japan. So with Ichiro back at spring training, this time with a contract, the Mariners had a different on-field look. The old blended with the new under the Arizona sun. But there were questions about the season ahead. Would the freshly arrived talent make valuable contributions to the team? Could they contend for a third AL West title and maybe even get to the World Series? From the manager who led a team to a world championship, Pinella knew what it would take. Well, the good play, the good chemistry, the will to win, the team play. We've lost uh, some good players here over the past few years. But, you know, we've got a good young shortstop in Guillen that can play. We've added Booney that can hit the ball with some power here. And 
and we've also added each a room. Never before would a good start mean so much. Thanks to the unbalanced schedule in 2001, the Mariners opened the season with 19 games in April against AL West rivals. The Mariners pointed to those first 19 games as the key to making it back to the playoffs. As they came north for the opener, no one could have predicted the magical season that lay ahead. Major League Baseball Productions presents Sweet 116, the 2001 Seattle Mariners history-making season. We've got a packed house, a sellout crowd here at Safeco Field as the Mariners take a look at the Olden A's. Led by their MVP, Jason Giambi, the defending AL West champions look to be even better after Johnny Damon arrived. And on opening night 2001, the Athletics already had a 1-0 lead when they loaded the bases in the top of the fourth, immediately challenging the Mariners' resolve. It's a line drive, left center, base hit. Jeremy will score. Hernandez rounding third, coming to the plate. Here's the throw by Cameron, cut off by Olerud. Ortiz singles to left center, driving in two more, and it's 4-0 Athletics in the top of the fourth. But the Mariners would claw their way back. In the seventh inning, Ichiro sparked a game-tying rally. So Ichiro receives a standing ovation. You can see the Japanese flags waving all over the place. A walk pushed Ichiro to second, giving D.H. Edgar Martinez his first RBI chance. Swamlin is lined in the right field for a base hit. Here's Ichiro sprouting. In the bottom of the eighth, manager Lou Pinella put the game in motion, and Ichiro did the legwork. There's the bunt by Ichiro. Beauty up the first baseline. From the first, gets up by Ortiz. Gay into third. Ichiro winds up in second base. Holy smoke, what a perfect bunt by Ichiro. First baseman John Olerud stepped in to try to break the tie with the bases full of Mariners. Fly ball into left center field. This is going to score 1-1 one, one with the catch tag at third, Carlos Guillen. Mariners take the lead by four. So the Mariners were already playing smart, unselfish baseball in their opener. In the ninth, Kazuhiro Suzaki closed out the win and earned his first save of the year. Seattle went on to take two of three from the defending AL West champs. One ground ball hit to third. Right there, Bill goes down to second for one. Boom! Through the first and it's over! And the Japanese connection huge as the Mariners knock off the Oakland Athletics. The Mariners' first road trip of the year began in Texas against the Rangers. And Seattle wasted no time flashing the leather all over the ballpark at Arlington. Wide of third, David Bell makes a classy play and throws him out. Lined into center field, Cameron and he, Ronnie third heading home. The throw to the plate by Cameron is going to be in time, got him! And Ichiro showed the baseball world another facet of his game. Goodbye. Well hit ball deep to right field. Goodbye baseball, sayonara baseball. Ichiro with his first major league home run. It breaks a 7-7 tie and gives the Mariners a two-run lead. After taking two of three from the Texas Rangers, it was on to Oakland, where once again, Ichiro would set the tone. In the eighth inning, he made a play that would soon become known everywhere as simply the throw. Ground ball, base hit in the right field. Heading for third is Terrence Long. The throw by Ichiro. Beautiful, Peggy Gatto. Oh, threw something out of Star Wars down there. Ichiro showed off the arm, and Brett Boone showed off the swing. Pitch swung on, and a fly ball hit the deep left center field. Going back, Terrence Long away back. Today, Edgar finished the three-game sweep with a three-run blast. Swing and a drive, deep to left field, going and going, goodbye baseball. And history is made as the Mariners for the first time have swept a three-game series, a series of any kind here in Oakland. The Mariners returned home to complete a great run through each AL West foe. Swung on, fly ball hit to left field, this will do it. Javier is there, the shutout is complete, the sweep is complete, the 19 games out of the 
the gates are complete. Tomorrow is Shakespeare's birthday. And you know what? Perhaps his most famous quote was to be or not to be. The Mariners certainly have been fabulous. It's early, but you know, I like the way our team plays baseball. We play aggressive. We take it to the other team. But we play very well defensively. We've got uh, a deep bullpen that gives me matchups uh, nightly. At the same time, a starting pitching is professional. So we're going to be in a lot of ball games this year. Yes, Sweet Lou's club was clicking as they thundered into Yankee Stadium for three games against the defending world champion Yankees. Soft liner into left field. That's going to drop in a base hit. Here comes Edgar. The throw to the plate by Knobloch floats in on a hop. Edgar scores. 6-5 Seattle. They could do no wrong against the Yankees. Key hits came from throughout the lineup, and they put up seven runs in each game. When New York threatened, the defense came up big time. And he makes the catch. Holy smoke, what a grab. Go club first baseman. It's a fastball, swung on, and a ground ball hit to Gian, and he underhands to Boone. And this ball game is over, and this sweep is complete. They have run their astounding record at the beginning of this year to 18 and 4. The Chicago White Sox would be the next team to witness greatness. Look at the play by Boone. He can do it. He can play some second base. Fly ball deep to right field. Ordonez to the track, to the wall. Goodbye, baseball. The 2 2 pitch. Fly ball into center field, and this will do it. Mike Cameron is there, and the Mariners have the major league record. Their 20th win in April. Kyle set a new AL record with 13 saves in April. Just one of the Mariners' remarkable numbers for the month 20 wins, 15 and 4 against the division, and a nine game lead. Those guys going to be, when it's all said and done, you know, one of the greatest teams ever assembled. I think the biggest key for us was uh, scoring some runs early. Uh, our pitching and defense has been incredible. We didn't beat ourselves. You know, we were a lot better than people thought we were, and, and we as players knew that. Returning home to start the month of May, it was Seattle's starting pitchers who were showing their might. Aaron Seeley was off to his best start since 93. There he goes again. Swung on a miss. Throw two by Lankin. Strike him out. Fastball on the outside corner, he rung him up. Swing and a miss, strike three. Aaron Seeley strikes out Carroll Everett. Fastball and a fly ball that's hooking down the left field line, and it's into the screen fair. Just a bullet. There's uh, 25 very tough guys, uh, know how to play the game, and uh, love to play the game, and uh, play the game the right way. Diving stop, David Bell. What a play. The way we've gotten off to a good start, you look up and down our lineup, and I don't think that it's necessarily a real intimidating looking lineup on paper. But uh, when, when we've come together and we've played the games, you know, we've just executed real well and uh, been getting those big hits. And no one had as many big hits as Seattle's new second baseman. What a shot by Boone! His tour in April that saw him hit 348 with 21 RBIs continued through May. Pinello noticed that the veteran was making the right adjustments at the plate. When he doesn't try to pull the ball consistently and uses right center, left center, uh, he's a very, very productive hitter. Well hit into the gap in right center field. John Oldwood scores on a two-out double by Brett Boone. I've just been consistent with my approach. You're going to go for four, and you might do, go for four the next day, but uh, I've just stayed and trusted uh, what I've been doing all year, and as a result of that, um, I've, been as I've been more consistent than I've ever been in my career. And first-time Gold Glovers Ichiro and Mike Cameron consistently led the Mariners' defense. Well hit, right center field, Cameron on the run, dives, and he makes the catch! Flying onto the warning track! hit deep, and I believe they got one on the board. No, Ichiro no. leaps over the fence, comes back with the baseball, yes! An amazing catch by Ichiro. Toward the hole, 
great stop by Boone and the throw to 40. Oh, oh, my. That's a major league play right there. Mr. Consistency, John Olerud led the Mariners to another 21 month in May by hitting 354 with 18 RBIs. And reliever Jeff Nelson's 12 scoreless innings in the season's second month kept Seattle's bullpen the best in the American League. He's filthy, and that slaughter is just devastating. And, and to have him compliment uh, everybody else down there, it's been huge. You can have uh, a real nice bullpen, you can have a real nice starting staff, but you need somebody to anchor that thing and really make it work at the end of the ball game. And that's exactly what Sasaki has done for us. This game is over as Sasaki paints the outside corner. Wow. Swing and a miss, the ball game is over. It was great to set up for Mariano. It was great to set up for Cos. I mean, this guy's come over from a different league and has dominated these hitters. June arrived and the Mariners were playing to a packed house each night at Safeco Field. They extended their season-long win streak to 11 when Alex Rodriguez in Texas made a second unsuccessful trip to Seattle. Boone, putting together a career year, had a career night. And a high fly ball is deep to right field. That's got a shot fly. Edgar had the night off, but he wasn't going to miss Booney's show. Swung on it, Nelson! Deep to left field! It will find my way into the upper tank! Brett Boone is having an unbelievable year! And the Mariners have just taken the lead by a score of 8-6 to six, as Brett Boone has six RBIs. Just one of those one of those games. I mean you don't it doesn't happen to you very often. Mooney is getting a little curtain call right here. Those don't happen very often either. You know, I might have had three in my life. The very next night, down by one run on the eighth inning, Stan Javier kept the Mariners alive with a great catch at the wall, sparking some more Mariner mojo. Fly ball into left field. Javier to the warning track, to the wall. He's there, leaps up and he makes the catch. Up against the wall. In the bottom of the eighth, it was Mike Cameron's turn to be the hero. Swung on and a high fly ball. Hit deep to left field. That will fly away. The magic is still here. Mike Cameron has hit a two-run home run to give the Mariners the lead amazingly. Five to four. Unbelievable. Even A-Rod was helpless against the momentum of his former team. Fastball is popped up into left field. Gian out. Javier in. Stanley's there. He's got it. The ball game is over. Mariners won it 5 to 4. They have won 13 in a row. Great catches by each year on Charles Gibson preserved win number 14. And with Paul Abbott starting the next night against San Diego, Seattle's 15th win in a row was in the bag in a hurry. Edgar hits the ball to deep center field and Katsi goes back to the track. Looks out. deep center field, cuts him back, he looks up and that will fly away. John Olerud with a drive into the gap in left center field, this one is gone, goodbye baseball. 15 in a row, yeah, here we go. Slider got him looking and the ball game is over. It's been phenomenal, the, the things that we're able to do uh, on a daily basis, on a consistent basis, it's just been, uh, been a great ride. Interleague play continued at Denver's Coors Field as Stan Javier and Mike Cameron once again provided a dramatic one-two punch. Hammer to left. Back goes Javier. He is at the wall and he makes the grab. Javier might have just saved the game for the Mariners as he reaches up over the yellow line. Swung on and a fly ball hit to deep center field. Back goes one to the track, the wall, fly away! It's the sixth home run by the Mariners tonight. Oh, my. Next stop, Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, where John Olerud made a little history at the plate. High fastball, it's lined down the left field line, into the corner, over the bullpen mound, on into the bullpen, and Olerud will coast into second base with a leadoff double. 
Holywood lines it fair down the right field line. Why not pick the other corner for another double? He's on his way to second base with a leadoff double. He's on his way to third base with a triple. The throw to third base, John slides in. Drive in the center field, charging his cap say has to play it on the hop. guys were uh, talking to me saying, hey, you know, this is a good chance. Now you got to go up there and, and take a good swing. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Having not lost a road series, the Mariners headed to Oakland with the commanding 18 game lead in the American League West. Down two games to one in the final game of a four game set, pinch hitter Brett Boone and the Mariners reached down deep played as if their entire season was suddenly on the line. It would be Seattle's 25th come from behind win of the young season. Swung on and belted deep to left center field and that will fly fly away. The Mariners have just grabbed the lead 9-8. to eight. A 1-1 one -one to Edgar Martinez by Tam. Swung on line to the right center field. Four base hit. The Mariners are going to get the lead. Edgar on his way to second base. He will have a two RBI double. And the Mariners lead it 11 to 9. And the 1 2 pitch on the way. Strike three. Call and it's over. And the Mariners, for the first time in 25 years, have won five games here in Oakland. In his ninth season at the helm, Lou saw his Mariners become just the third team in history, the first since the 74 Dodgers to win more than 62 games by the All Star break. At 63 and 24, with the entire second half ahead, they led Oakland by 19 games. And without a doubt, the most incredible story of the first half was the one named Wonder from Japan, Ichiro. All he did was set an all time Mariners record for most hits in the first half of the season with 133. Ichiro has been as good a leadoff hitter as there is in baseball. He's leading the league in hits, leading the league in batting average. Unbelievable! Listen, this kid's a player. If you can win seven batting titles in a row in Japan, you can hit anywhere. Americans quickly learned what Japanese fans had known for years. Ichiro's fun to watch. He gets to first in just under four seconds, has an unorthodox batting style, and always seems to make contact. He also has a very vocal fan base. Usually, baseball fans recognize baseball players, but for Ichiro's case, many people who are not baseball fans recognize him because of his accomplishment, because he's good looking. He is uh, Michael Jordan of Japan. At times you find yourself a little bit pummeled by, you know, people rushing by you to get, a, especially the, the cameraman. It's almost like being at the uh, a postseason game every day. And despite the media glare and the pressure of carrying the weight of a country on his shoulders, Ichiro not only thrived in his new environment, he excelled. It's just been amazing how he's been able to just make the adjustment. Coming over here, facing guys that he's never seen, never heard of, and doing the things that he's doing, it's just unbelievable. Ichiro, a 23-game hitting streak. I don't know of a way to get this guy out. I mean, he gets behind the count, he, he beats the ball on the ground, then he gets a base hit. And then he steals second, then he steals third. Probably the one thing that has impressed me the most is his uh, concentration level on tough situations when when it's clutch time. Swung on and belted to deep right field. It is way back. It is gone. Ichido has tied the game with a homer to right. When he needed the long ball, he got it. I mean, this guy is legit. He's the real deal. He plays a great right field. Ichiro, who makes the leap and makes the catch. The throw back to first base. Double play. Unbelievable. Ichiro Ichiro's glove and arm had his fellow All-Stars in awe, especially the throw. Okay, so here he goes. See. There's the rocket launcher he pulled out of his back pocket. <laughs> got him. Where is that thing made in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pick up one of those things. The thing I'll, I'll remember, or I, I, I'll think of most of all, is he's got a little bit of flair to him. He's got a little bit of cockiness to him, but not in a good way, in a good way. He's gonna win a gold glove and possibly MVP. All these things for him to be able to step in and do that, you know it's there's a lot of work behind the scenes. It's very impressive. Everyone, welcome to Seattle.
of the host with the most, and I mean that literally, a record eight Mariners invited to the Midsummer Classic, and each hero of the leading all-star vote getter. They've been playing at a 730 winning percentage. That's how good the Mariners have been this year. They deserve it. The All-Star Games in Seattle, is this perfect or what? <laughs> All-Star Week in Seattle was chock full of festivities, from the scores of smiling kids romping through the baseball heaven known as Fan Fest, to the highly anticipated monster swings of the ever-popular Home Run Derby. Are you ready for some long ball? There goes Boone deep to left. It's gone! There it goes. Bond sends it way back. It's off the facade of the upper deck. That's the upper deck. Here's your upper deck shot. Oh, this one is just near. Oh, my God. Oh. 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 That is upper deck, man. Whoa. He could walk off with the single round record, which was 13 by McGuire. This guy's playing on a show, man. Oh, back, 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 back. Forget about it. And Jason Jambi clubs out 14 home runs. Let's go, Samuel. This is a way back, back, back. Gracious, way up and gone. Luis Gonzalez has won the home run derby. As guest host of This Week in Baseball, Mike Cameron gave fans an all-access pass to the fun and games that accompany the Midsummer Classic. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, bro. Of all the all the 60 All-Stars that are here, this is the man right here that appreciates it the most. Anytime a guy comes from the plane to try on his All-Star jersey, that tells you something. Sasaki <laughs> Sai! I was wondering when you were come on. What's up, man? Hey. Well, this week in baseball, say hello to my friends. This week in baseball. This week in baseball. Yes. Mike Swain. How's it going, brother? My boy. Played against you in the minor leagues. Now he's a stud all-star. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'm about to show you guys my patented Derek Jeter over the top. Here we go, guys. Here we go. <laughs> hey! Robbie Alomar, my man. My boy, my boy. That's it. By Cameron, one of the best in the game. So I want you to wave at the camera over there. Yeah. I will promise you I'll be right back. It's unbelievable. It's great. It's unbelievable, bro. I'm about to take it up here. I got to show them some love. Guys, wait to see we get baseball. Wow. You can't beat this, fellas. With perfect weather continuing on Tuesday, Seattle's year-long anticipation of hosting the All-Star Game became a reality. The pregame pageantry had a distinct international flavor. And with a total of eight Mariners named to the American League squad, the 72nd All-Star Game almost seemed like another home game. Freddy Garcia, Kazuhiro Sasaki, Jack Nelson, by Kimbra, Ichiro Sasaki. Almost every Mariners game in 2001, Ichiro was leading off. Ichiro's going to face a man that he's never seen before, the most dominant left-hander in the world, and that's Randy Johnson who gets the start tonight. Rolls one over to Helton. Johnson's not there. Face hit. How can I beat you? Let me count the ways. Ichiro, who's almost running when he swings the bat, beats Johnson to the bag. And when each row gets on, chances are he's going to steal. He wasted no time showing the National Leaguers his speed on the base pads. 
Next on the Mariners Parade of Stars, the young Venezuelan, Freddy Garcia, fired one scoreless inning and earned the victory. Then it was time for Cal Ripken to steal the show, putting Safe Cole Field into his own grand book of lore in his final All-Star game. Cammy would get his turn to shine in the sixth inning. In his second All-Star at bat, he ran the count full and then showed the world his trademark hustle. Cameron off the end of the bat. He'll drop it into left center field for a base hit. Cameron is going to test a little, but that's a hustling double for Mike Cameron. He ran right in the face of Moises Alou. Flying around first base. In a special mid-game ceremony, Major League Baseball honored Cal and National League legend Tony Gwynn. Thank you. It's been great. When it was clear that Tommy Lasorda was not injured, this moment turned out to be one of the game's funniest. Tommy landing right on his gold medal. <laughs> Mariners All-Stars weren't done yet. Jeff Nelson made his All-Star debut and threw a scoreless seventh inning. And much like a regular season game, Nelly was helping to set up the very popular hometown closer, Kazuhiro Sasaki. And these proud Seattle fans are happy as Sasaki tries to close it for the American League and help Freddy Garcia on to the victory. With two out the night. Get the, the American League wins. The 72nd All-Star Game, 4-1. to one. Garcia the winner, Sasaki the save, and a big night of baseball for the Seattle Mariners, and more importantly for the fans here at St. Go Field. Yes, Seattle put its special stamp on the 2001 All-Star Game, but when it was over, the spotlight was on Cal. 2001 MVP, Cal Ripken. First half of the season uh, couldn't go any better for here in Seattle, uh, and this ballpark is uh, fabulous. The All-Star Games, I've been very, very fortunate to, uh, to go to quite a number of them, but uh, i got to tell you, this one is the most special. Absolutely. The Mariners remained home after the break, opening the second half against the National League's top star Barry Bonds and the San Francisco Giants. In the bottom of the ninth against hard-throwing closer Rob Nen, it was David Bell who came up big. Well hit deep to left center field. Out to the landing. Goodbye baseball. Holy smoke, David Bell did it. He ties the game. Mariners played long ball to tie the game, then played small ball in the 11th inning. There he goes. Pitch high ball, throw to second by Santiago, not in time. The throw is wide, it pulled Aurelio off the bag, a stolen base from Mike Cameron, his 19th of the season, and one of his biggest. Tom Lampkin stepped in with two outs, looking for still another Mariners miracle. Chopper over the mound, in behind second base. Backhanding the ball, the second baseman, the throw to the plate, not in time. Cameron scores. The Mariners win it, four to three in the bottom half of inning number eleven. Holy smoke! What a ball game tonight to open up the second half of the year. In the finale of the three-game set, Freddie Garcia gave up just two runs in another ace performance at ten and one. Freddie was going for his fifth straight victory, and he would get plenty of help from the Mariners' defense. Here's a swing by Kent to drive. That's it to deep right field. Going back, Ichiro to the track. He's to the wall. He leaps, and Ichiro caught it. The leaping grab against the right field wall. A steal one from Kent. When the eventual world champion Arizona Diamondbacks came to town, Aaron Silly would charm these snakes into submission with the best game of his career. Ball got it. Twenty in a row. Strike three on the inside corner again. And Aaron Seeley has a two-hit shutout, his first two-hitter as a major leaguer. 
The win pushed Aaron's record to 11-1 and in a game that was a perfect example of the importance of Seattle's starting rotation as the Mariners continued to play at a torrid pace. It all starts with pitching for us. Uh, those guys that went out there every day, those five starters, and they know how to pitch. Strike three call. He got him looking. Jamie Moyer strikes out Alex Rodriguez. You may look at him and see that he doesn't throw 95 and, you know, maybe think that he's not tough, but he is extremely competitive and um, uh, I, there's no one else that I'd want out there in a big game. The 3 2 pitch is a change up, slug on it, and got it. Down goes Ramirez. In the middle of the Seattle rotation, veteran lefty Jamie Moyer always seemed to deliver a healthy dose of frustration to the opposition. You know, if the offense isn't swinging the bats well that day, they're going to keep us in the ball game or keep it close. At age 25, Garcia had consistently shown the poise of a seasoned veteran as he was often matched up against the other team's aces, and Freddie proved that he could match wits with the best of them. He's not intimidated. He's aggressive. Uh, he has a facility for a young pitcher to, to think uh, pretty well out there and, and utilize all his pitches. He's a gamer. Um, he wants the ball. He wants to come at you, and he dares you to hit it. I don't get why Freddie's not mentioned along with everybody else on the top pitchers in the American League because I think he's, he's the top guy. But there was another angle to the greatness of Seattle starters. Not just the power of Garcia, the smoothness of Seeley, or the boxing of Moyer. It was the depth provided by fourth starter Paul Abbott. You win a lot of games, you, you take a lot of pride in, in your job, and we kind of fed off each other. In a late July battle between division leaders, the Mariners traveled to Minnesota to take on the Twins. The Mariners would allow only eight runs in the four-game set as they again employed their winning formula. Great pitching and excellent defense. The result, a Mariners sweep. Swung on, base hit center field. Here to third base is Allen. The throw to the play by Charles. He's in time. they got it. Charles Gibson, an amazing throw. Right on the money to Dan Wilson. Back in Seattle, Garcia led the Mariners to the second sweep of the Twins in as many weeks. It was his third complete game of the year. The 2-0 pitch on the way to Pierzynski. Swung on and a comebacker to the mound. Freddie has it and throws the ball to first base and this ball game is over. And the Mariners have their 12th sweep of 2001 and an unbelievable 47 games over 500. My, oh my, what a July. In August, the Mariners just kept on winning. Every which way you can, they began in Detroit with some brilliant pitching from rookie Joel Pinheiro, who continued the excellent start to his career. Curve got him. Oh, that's nasty right there. The 22-year-old Pinheiro went seven strong innings for his second win in two starts, and then Nelson came in to set up Daimajin. Jeff Nelson makes quick work, boy, of the Detroit Tigers. Counting his years in Japan, Sasaki notched his 300th career save and his 34th of the season. Here comes the 1-1 pitch on the way, and it swung on and hit to right field, and right there is Ichiro, and it's over. The win kept alive the Mariners' incredible streak of not losing a road series all year. After taking three of four in Cleveland, he was back home to Seattle, where Edgar reached a career RBI milestone against the Blue Jays. And he would do it in style. And that ball is belted and that is number 1,000 and it counts on a home run. His 251st of his career. What a way to celebrate 1,000. Another Seattle streak would be challenged a few nights later. The Mariners had yet to lose three games in a row, and here they were, trailing the White Sox in the ninth. Swung on, line drive, base in left field. Here comes one, around third, here comes two to tie, and we are even at 3-3. Three, 2-2 three. Two, two on the way to McLemore, and it's swung on, and a high fly ball, belted deep to center field, Mariners win. It's over the head of Singleton, Lampkin scores, and the Mariners still have not lost three in a row. Unbelievable comeback here tonight. A few days later, the green monster of Boston's Fenway Park would succumb to the Mariners' magic in a dramatic 11th inning. The 0-2 pitch on the way to Edgar. Swung on and belted. Deep to left field. I told you, you couldn't keep a good man down. And Edgar Martinez has just hit it out. A three-run home run. And the Mariners lead it 6-3. to three. 
When the Mariners' victory parade moved down the coast to New York's Yankee Stadium on August the 19th, Mike Cameron would hit two home runs, including a grand slam on his way to tying a club record with eight RBIs in one game. Swing and a fly ball deep to left field. Going and going. Goodbye, baseball. It's the Mariners' four. The Yankees' nothing. Swung on, fly ball, hit to deep center field. Williams goes back, away back, get out the right, Brad! And Buster grab off! It is Brad Salami time! And how about eight RBI? And four for four. And the Mariners now lead this, baby, 10 to 1! Back to Seattle for a big series against Cleveland. In a tie game in the top of the ninth, Arthur Rhodes was asked by umpire Tim McClellan to remove his ear ring at the request of Indians batter Omar Vizquel. Chaos then ensued on the baseball diamond, and both benches emptied when the dust cleared. It was Arthur who was ejected, but the Mariners kept their focus as Al Martin's hustle put them in the position to win again. The throw to second base, and he is safe. And the possible winning run now at second base with nobody out. And David Bell coming up. Everything the Mariners do is right. That's why they pinch run Martin. And Bell gets the bunt down. Rocker throws low in the dirt. He comes Al Martin. Al Martin coming in. The Mariners win. The Mariners win. The Mariners began September in Baltimore at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, still finding ways to win ball games. Each hero and Mark McLemore continued to play excellent defense, this time impressing Cal Ripken with some outstanding throws from the outfield. Line the right base hit. Each hero will play it on one hop. Look at the gun of each hero. Wilson with a tag, and Conine is cut down at the plate. What a throw by each hero to gun down the go ahead run. Time and swung out and lined in the left field. Coming up on the bounce. The throw is taken. The throw to the plate. And this time, out at the plate is Melvin Moore. A great throw by Mark McLemore. After taking two of three from the O's, it was back home for an Ichiro milestone. Wide and third into the hole. The throw to first base, and there it is. The new American League record for singles by a rookie. Brett Boone would follow suit with two history makers of his own. And a fly ball to deep right field. Over to the corner goes Richard. Looks up and now Brett Boone can treat the record all alone. 33 home runs as a second baseman. High fly ball. Belted deep to right field. Brett Boone is the all-time RBI leader in American League history as his second baseman. After winning four straight, the Mariners' record was 103 and 40 on September the 10th. That night in Anaheim, utility outfielder Charles Gibson again played his heart out. Gibson dives. Did he come up with it? Yes! What a catch by Charles Gibson! Charles Gibson with a diving play and left saves the day for Seattle. But the next day, an entire nation was stunned by the September the 11th terrorists' attacks. With a heavy heart, baseball resumed its schedule one week later. Renewed patriotism greeted the national game as the people of a healing nation sought diversion during a most difficult time. On September the 18th, an emotional crowd honored lost heroes and joined together like never before. And folks, we're getting back to baseball. On the second night of the resumed season, it was now time for the Mariners to clinch the division crown. Popped up right side of the diamond. Brett Boone is there. He makes the catch, and the ball game is over. The Mariners are the American League West champions for 2001. That's the first time I have ever seen a flag wave during a pennant clinching game. We talked about it, you know, that when we clinched, we, we wanted to make sure that people back in New York knew that we were thinking of them. We were happy about clinching, but, uh, but it was just uh, a little bittersweet. 
Everybody's thoughts are in the same place. Everybody's feelings are the exact same. And everybody was together. We didn't want our winning to detract at all uh, from what had occurred. What a season for one of the greatest teams in baseball history with 106 wins and counting. And counting. Going into the final home series in early October, the Mariners went for the record. The Mariners win for the 114th time this year. They tie the New York Yankees of 1998 for the second most wins in baseball history and for the most wins ever by an American League ball club. The magic ride continues and it just gets better and better. And Jamie Moyer was just getting better and better. Strike on the outside corner, down goes Sheldon. Strike three, all right over the heart of the ball. And kind of sealed the team record and a Moyer milestone. Swing and a fly ball to left field. Javier's there. It's over. The Mariners have set the American League record. Their 115th win of the year. Jamie Moyer with the win goes to 20 and 6. In the next to last game of the season, Brett Boone had yet another great achievement. And a fly ball hit to deep right center field. And The greatest power year in American League history for a second baseman. And would A-Rod be the historic final out? Swing and a miss! Dan Wilson hangs on! The Seattle Mariners have tied the 1906 Chicago Cubs with win number 116. The Mariners are in the record book for the most wins in baseball history. It was a record year for records broken by the Mariners. In a unique team, Triple Crown, they led the league in batting, ERA, and fielding. Outstanding hitting, great pitching, superb defense. My, oh my! In the wake of their impressive and historic regular season, the Mariners were primed for the postseason, which they'd reached for the fourth time in the past seven years. To this team, the division title was just the first step. The new goal was a world championship. We've been down this road before. We'd like to break the barn door down and, and get to a World Series. You know, it's nice to have division flags hanging from the rafters. How about an American League championship flag and a World Series flag? That's where it really, really starts. The first challenge for Seattle was the American League Central Division champions, the Cleveland Indians. Their high-powered offense would truly test the Mariners' pitching staff. At Safeco Field in Game 1, the Mariners set out the race. Freddy Garcia, the American League ERA leader during the regular season. The Chief got off to a great start, allowing just one hit in the first three innings. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. He also was backed up by some fine defensive play. Swung on, little blooper, hit into shallow center field, charging up on the run, and out going the shortstop, back for more to make an amazing catch. And somehow, with his body fully extended, made a spectacular catch. In an otherwise brilliant pitching performance, Freddie struggled in the fourth inning. And suddenly, the Mariners found themselves down by one game in the best of five series. When you get into a postseason type situation, eight teams, everybody's capable of winning. It's just a question of how you play in, in short series. Is it, boy, if you get a little cold, the other team can beat you. Losing the first game of the series was nothing new to the Mariners. They'd done it eight times during the regular season before going on to win those series. If the Indians had any notions of taking a two-game lead back to Cleveland, Seattle quickly erased them in the bottom of the first. A high fly ball, felt in the left field, fly away, two to nothing Mariners. The pitch to Edgar, swung on, a high fly ball, hit the deep center field, lost it, goes back, it will fly away. Edgar Martinez on the first pitch goes dead center field. In a must-win game two, who better to send to the mound than 20-game winner Jamie Moyer? His off-speed pitches baffle Cleveland hitters. And a changeup to the outside. David Bell added a solo home run in the fifth. David 
Bell clobbers it to left. Gone! After six-plus strong innings, Moyer left the game. Then, as it had been all season long, the Seattle bullpen took over and sealed the 5-1 victory for the Mariners. Run on and missed in a fastball, and this series is even at a game apiece. We all know if we lead in the game in the seventh inning, and pretty much you have a great chance to win. And it's because the relievers and, and Sasaki close in the deal. The series then shifted to Cleveland, where the Mariners got on the board first in game three. But after that, it was all tried. When we fell behind, we still had confidence that we could play well. Pitching is going to win for you at the end of the year. Freddy Garcia took the ball again in game four, and he got off to a great start by fanning two batters in the top of the first inning. A swing and a miss, chase the high fastball. The Mariners relied on their formula of good pitching, great defense, with timely hitting to come. The score remained 1 0 Indians until the top of the seventh, when the Mariners, facing elimination, refused to lose. On the ground, right field made hit. Gonzalez has the ball. Firing to the plate. Not in time. Cammy's double gave Seattle an insurance run in the eighth. And it's 4 to 2 Seattle. Then Edgar came up in the ninth and hit a mammoth home run. Belt is right down the line, and that will fly away! Edgar's blast gave the Mariners a 6-2 lead, and then Suzaki came in to weave his magic. And a pop-up, and when it comes down, it's off to Seattle. The Mariners survive, and they get game five. The Mariners proved their resiliency and won a game they had to win. Now it was time to finish the job back home. We want to thank the fans. I mean, they, they're special. Soto Mojo, Safe Cold Field, Game 5. Home field advantage is what the Mariners played for all season long. One more win over Cleveland would earn the Mariners a second straight trip to the ALCS. And Game 2 winner Jamie Moyer was just the man to get them there. Again, he had the Indians off balance. Swung on, ground ball, double play ball. Right there to second for one. Boom, three way to first, double play. Five of Moyer's first six outs were ground balls, and he had Brett Boone to thank for one of them. Another ground ball, boom! Scrambling and he got him. That is textbook Brett Boone. The Indians threatened in the third inning. And the bases are loaded for Alomar, just one out. Swing and a ground ball to Bell in third. Could be two. Over to Boom for one. Relay to first. Double play. Now it was time for the offense to shine. In a scoreless tie, Mark McLemore delivered. How about that? Left field. Cordova trapped it. Two runs in. With a 2-1 lead in the seventh inning, Edgar Martinez came through with a big hit one more time. Left center. Locked it on the move. Won't get it. The Mariners could now smell victory as their ever-reliable bullpen took over for the final three frames. Entering the ninth, of course, was Kazuhiro Suzaki, who would close the game and send the Mariners to the American League Championship Series for the second year in a row. Swing and a line shot, one hopper into David Bell. He throws the first. Is the third time charm. The Mariners will find out. Winning 116 regular season games earned them the right to play game five at home. And boy, were the Mariners glad to win it in front of their fans. I love to play this game, and I love to make these people happy here because <laughs> they enjoy, you know, the game of baseball, and they enjoy it. Seattle Mariners in 2001. I've never seen a city respond to a team like they have this team. They've been a huge part of the season for us, and today they were like they've always been, and, and a little louder at the end. Among the many Mariner heroes, Ichiro batted 600 in the American League Division Series record. With his team playing hard every inning, American League Manager of the Year Lou Pinella never doubted that his club could come back against the Indians. I knew how long this team had a lot of character. You don't do the things that we'd done if the character wasn't there, if, if, if the unity wasn't there, if the if the spirit to win, if, if the will to win wasn't there. I mean, it's just a question of going out and do it in a particular series.
The Seattle Mariners fell one step away from their ultimate goal, a world championship, falling to the New York Yankees in the American League Championship Series. Nevertheless, they can take great pride in the complete team effort in 2001. Along the way, Brett Boone had American League records for home runs and RBIs by a second baseman, and Ichiro was the American League batting and stolen base champion, as well as Rookie of the Year. There's the punt by Ichiro. Beauty up the first base line. Throw to first. Gets on by Ortiz. Get out the ride, Brad. Brad Buster grab off. It is Brad Salami time. 20 in a row retired by Seattle. His second three-run shot of this game. Down on the road. That's just a hit for the cycle. The throw to third base. They nail it. Unbelievable throw. By and the Mariners still have not lost three in a row. My God, 116 games. That's a lot of wins during the course of the summer. He did something only one other team has done in the history of baseball, and no one in our league has ever done it. There were some years that we couldn't do that in two years. There's really no hero on our team. There's, there's 25 guys that have been doing it all year. A club record three and a half million fans filled a gem of a ballpark to help push this team to the greatest heights it has ever known. Seattle fans are great. And uh, they, uh, they're this baseball town. It's just a fun place. It's an electric place to play. They've definitely been behind us all the way. We play a last place team on a Monday night, and it's a playoff atmosphere. It's a special place in the great Northwest, and, and I definitely enjoy it every minute of it, every time we go on the field. Baseball's best fans were rewarded with a history-making season, most total wins and road wins ever in the American League, and the most thrills in 25 years of Mariners baseball. In fact, the Mariners and their fans Never looked so good. David Bell did it! What a shot by Boone. Thank you, fans. Ichiro, you are unbelievable! Arigato oh, gozaimashita. Oh, my, oh, my! Holy smoke, what a ball game. Thank you, fans. Thank you. No! 